Hi, I'm Abby Rosenbaum. I work at Bearings. I am a director. I work in the real estate research group. Um, my specialty is in the retail sector. Um, I've been working um, in the retail sector for about 20 years now, and um, I'm excited to be participating in the call today. So I'll begin thinking, uh, talking about pricing of grocery anchored centers. Um, the volume has been um, depressed recently, so that's making it a little bit difficult to assess the pricing of retail centers in general. But looking at the data, we can see that there has been um, some decline in retail prices that's led by a weakness in malls. And so that is, that is um, to say that grocery anchored centers are holding up better than malls. But again, until we see more trades, I think that um, until we see a higher volume, we're going to have a harder time assessing what the prices are currently in this in this environment. Um, in terms of the uh, performance of retail centers and market fundamentals, um, it has been um, a weaker year so far in 2020. Uh, absorption has been declining, and that has led to some rent softening. We haven't quite seen them soften to the extent that we expect them to soften. That probably will come in 2021. But really, the rent declines and the demand declines are coming from the inline, the non-anchor tenants. The anchor tenants are really what are supporting a lot of these centers. And in terms of specific tenant demand, a lot of the essential retailers, those grocery anchors, those discounters, the warehouse clubs, those are really what are driving the improved demand in 3Q. Uh, we'll see how things, things move along in 4Q and into 2021. But as of right now, I think it's really a story about grocery and other essential retailers leading the way. So I think really what it is is tenant mix. Um, that really helps grocery anchored centers maintain a pretty consistent amount of sales, no matter if it's um, online like we're seeing in the current pandemic or whether it's in store like we've seen um, in other economic downturns, consumers tend to pull back on other types of goods, say clothing, um, maybe some, some other um, non-essential goods, but really um, they tend to focus a lot on the daily necessities, and that's, that's really what comprises a lot of the grocery anchored centers here in the U.S. And we saw that during the pandemic. It was only exacerbated. Um, that historic surge in demand for daily necessities really um, helped the grocery anchored centers stand out um, during this challenging time in 2020. So really, over the past 12 months, those markets that have really stood out and had the best performance in terms of their grocery retail assets are the stronger population growth markets. They're some of the smaller markets, so markets such as Charlotte, such as Phoenix, Raleigh, Seattle. Some of the larger markets um, are seeing a bit of a, a weaker uh, performance um, compared to some of those smaller markets. And that has to do with not only the, as I mentioned, the population growth, but some of the impacts the pandemic is having on the market, such as um, more lockdowns if there's higher virus cases and a pullback in tourism um, is certainly affecting retail in certain markets as well. A center has to be well located and, and especially in this pandemic, um, we've seen a real acceleration of the adoption of online shopping. And that well located center is going to enable the retailers in that center to not only attract uh, customers uh, via curbside pickup, but also when we're talking about delivery, um, that's going to be something that's going to be very important. And so the biggest challenges that I see right now are the pandemic. Um, foot traffic and the accelerating adoption of online shopping. I think those are the three main challenges that I see for brick and mortar retailers. That's in 2020. Um, and I think depending on how the pandemic lasts into 2021, I think those are also um, things that are challenges that I'm concerned about or I'm thinking about as we head into 2021 as well. Retail is always adapting to, to changing consumer behavior. So even though we see these as potential challenges, I know it, it will, it may take more time, um, but those retailers that have that strong physical store and strong digital experience, I think will be in the best 
position to weather not only this year, but next year and the coming years. So I think the biggest trend that I've been seeing and that we are, cer we are certainly paying attention to is that omni-channel grocery part of the, um, of the shopping behavior of consumers. I think for grocery centers, it hasn't been as much of a story in the past. Um, even though about 20% of the, of the sales, of retail sales, comes from the food and beverage category, that has been mainly in store. But with the, with the pandemic, consumers are going online. They are um, not only getting their groceries delivered, but they are doing curbside pickup. They are doing other click and collect methods. So that really um, is something that we are, we are keeping track of, and that is going to certainly alter retail um, and specifically grocery now and into the future. I think in the short term, certainly consumers are going to be utilizing those omni-channel um, strategies, um, certainly not going into the stores where there's a threat of the virus, um, you know, but as longer, longer term as things, um, as the pandemic comes to an end, I think consumers will return to the stores, but the difference as compared to other other uh, recoveries for grocery stores, I think it's really going to be a continuation of that curbside pickup and the delivery. But I think uh, long term, you know, it goes back to what I what I talked about before and the the really location is going to matter for these grocery anchored centers and for grocery in general. Um, they are going to be like last mile fulfillment centers. And so they're going to have more curbside pickup. They're going to possibly be altering their store layouts. And that's going to be um, something that um, grocery center, uh, you know, owners are going to have to account for because there is going to be um, continued adoption of those omni-channel strategies. Mm -hmm.